fake giveaways, exploiting poverty, and crypto scamming. Mr. Beast has been exposed by numerous YouTubers throughout the years. But how many of these five YouTubers were actually speaking the truth? And did Mr. Beast really get away with all of the bad things he supposedly did? Well, we're going to find that out by starting with the YouTuber Iox, who exposed Mr. Beast for faking his giveaways all the way back in May of 2017. Back then, Jimmy was still known for his worst intro series and outrageous videos like grilling a micro Microwave, microwaving a microwave, microwaving a toaster, toasting an iPhone, watching microwaving a microwave, microwaving a toaster. Which were definitely iconic. But the YouTuber that exposed him had a different opinion about him, as he simply labeled him as a clickbaiter and paired him together with other deceiving content creators like Durf, the pro gamer J, and Exility. Now, this could already be seen as valid criticism, despite being somewhat hateful. But his real problem with Mr. Beast was about to come up a little bit later, as he accused him of faking giveaways gift card giveaways. You see, during this time it was a huge trend amongst YouTubers with a missing moral compass to host fake gift card giveaways, sometimes even in the form of live streams. And Ayox allegedly busted Jimmy on participating in those same activities. Together with his friend Liam, he found a YouTube channel named Clashup that started doing one of these giveaway live streams, and noticed that the host of the live stream had no interaction with the chat at all, which was due to it being pre-recorded. The owner of this channel simply went out, bought a gift card Cards, recorded opening them and then used them for himself, later using the video footage for the live stream. However, what Ayox also noticed was that the person hosting the live stream had the same distinctive voice as Mr. Beast, and that they even had the same table as Jimmy to open the gift card song, which could also be found in one of Mr. Beast's thumbnails. He didn't include a clip of this live stream for reference to hear Jimmy's voice, but he later explained that there was more evidence as an exact replica of this live stream also got hosted on Mr. Beast's second channel a day before. You would normally think that Clashup just stole this footage from Mr. Beast and ran it on their own channel, but this also got disproven, as there was a referral link in the description of Mr. Beast's livestream, and this link was identical to the one in Clashup's description, making the claim of Clashup using Jimmy's footage unlikely. I mean, if you wanted to rip someone's stream footage and use it as your own, you would probably use your own referral code for financial gain, and not fill the pockets of Mr. Beast. Now of course, all of this was never any hard evidence. And Clashup could have just used Mr. Beast's referral code to mess with him, but Jimmy never ended up responding to the allegations, with the livestream eventually disappearing and him only making an unrelated general statement in one of his videos that he would never fake giveaways. Yet, Ayox wasn't the only YouTuber that accused Mr. Beast of lying to his fans. No, there was another creator with over 14 million subscribers that exposed him for faking one of his videos and tried to cancel him for it. And this YouTuber was Rosanna Pensino. Now this story began on the 18th of December in 2021, when Mr. Beast uploaded a video titled Extreme One Million Dollars Hide and Seek, which was the third installment of his popular YouTube original series called The Creator Games. However, what Jimmy didn't know was that this series would be one of the main contributors to some of his controversies. You see, in Creator Games 2, where YouTubers played games of trivia for $300,000 to give away to their subscribers, Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio were already called out for cheating. They were competing with their entire family versus singular contestants, an advantage that many fans found unacceptable. And it resulted in Mr. Beast even having to address the situation by saying that the tournament was just for fun and that everyone had to blame him for the decision. And well, a few years later, the same situation occurred again, as he got blamed for yet another questionable decision. In Creator Games 3, various YouTubers competed in a hide and seek for the chance of donating $1 million to a charity of their choice. And among many of those competing, there was a creator, actress and singer with over 14 million subscribers that managed to make it all the way to the top 4. The name of this contestant? Rosanna Pensino, a creator that got most of her success on the platform by making creative baking videos. But this time, she wasn't interested in any Disney cakes. No she wanted that grand prize. After over 24 hours of hiding and a few close calls, she eventually got caught by Jimmy while changing hiding spots. Who's that? Oh! Oh no! Bros, you're not fooling anyone with those big pants. 
And while this wasn't the $1 million she was hoping for, Rosanna wasn't upset about her placement at all, as she placed third after another contestant called Larray got disqualified for falling asleep. The competition ultimately ended with Zack King finishing in first place, Quackity in second, and Rosanna in third. And while it didn't seem like anything particularly strange happened on that day, Rosanna then noticed something interesting when the video eventually got released. Because in the final video, when it got to the point where Mr. Beast revealed the podium play, Placements, he showed Zack King in first, the disqualified Lorraine in third, and Logan Paul in second. A contestant that got out way before her. And despite Rosanna not saying anything about this occurrence for over two years, she then all of a sudden broke her silence in October of 2023, when she decided to expose Mr. Beast for this deceitful editing trick on a podcast with Trisha Paytas. And I'm just confused what happened there. Again, I didn't get involved in any of the drama. I didn't, I was nice to everyone and they edited me out like midway through the video. She explained that she was heartbroken when the video got released, as it made her feel like she wasn't good enough. I understand, you know, like Logan has such a huge following and he's literally a professional wrestler and that like I get it, but it just made me feel like that you're not enough. And she even exposed Zack King for breaking certain contract terms of the competition where you couldn't hide in unsafe places, as he broke the rules by hiding in the ceiling, meaning that he technically cheated with his final hiding spot that won him the hide and seek. She waited an entire two years to say this as she was afraid of being labeled difficult to work with, and didn't want to turn the massive audience of Mr. Beast against her. And while these were very valid points to not reveal something you feel bad about, she then suddenly started intensifying her stance against Jimmy. Why are you? It just feels icky and it kind of felt like a boys club. Mm -hmm. Very much. And I mean, it is. That's what it was. I haven't been around another creator that made me feel like it was a boys club and then I wasn't welcome. Like that's that's the most shocking and yeah, it'd be the most hurtful thing because yeah. you think he's not like that. And it didn't end there, because Rosanna also decided to put out a tweet in which she told the entire story again, and this time put extra emphasis on the fact that Mr. Beast edited out the only female in the top three. She got a lot of support on this message from other women, and even revealed that she received at least three other messages from other female creators who've had similar experiences with Mr. Beast and those around him, suddenly making this appear as an attack on Jimmy. YouTubers like Atosi responded to this situation by saying that Logan Paul probably got added to the final three for retention, that only the winner got the ability to donate one million dollars to a charity of their choice, so that all of this didn't really matter, and that gender probably had nothing to do with it. But this didn't stop Rosanna and her campaign, as the situation then completely spiraled out of control. She went on the H3H3 podcast to continue spreading her message. I felt like he had females there for optics. I felt like he had females there also because it was a YouTube production and, you know, they wanted to have guys and girls be represented. But just because you're there doesn't mean you're welcome. And while Jimmy tried to DM her on Twitter for an opportunity to call and figure everything out, she refused. As Rosanna mentioned that she didn't want to create drama, felt hurt, that it's not mentally healthy for her to have someone make her look worse than she actually was to millions of people, and that she first wanted Mr. Beast to remember what he actually did. Jimmy denied that he was trying to make anyone look bad, and just wanted to talk things out. But Rosanna's answer was simple. Whatever he can say to me on the phone, he can say to me in writing. As a result, the conflict didn't get resolved. And after she then updated her Twitter bio to Top 3 Hide and Seek World Champion, trained for years with my little nephews, blowing the situation up more and more, the community eventually turned against her. Many were quite understanding at first, but now that the drama had been blown completely out of proportion, this rapidly changed. At 36 years of age, Rosanna Pensino had mental anguish because people didn't know she got third in Mr. Beast Hide and seek. Did she grow up rich or something? How does this cause you mental anguish for two years straight? However, her stance on this whole ordeal wasn't the only factor contributing to this increase in hate, as she also released a new music video one day after the drama, which made critics think that this whole situation was escalated intentionally to drive more attention to her song. Thanks to this criticism and thousands of death threats, she eventually deleted all of her tweets and apologized to Jimmy, but later redacted this apology again due to new information 
information and developments behind the scenes, which he ultimately deleted again and never elaborated on. Could this have been the work of the NDA she signed? We will never know for sure. But both Jimmy and Rosanna have moved on from this drama nowadays with both YouTubers focusing on their own channels again. Then again, these accusations against Mr. Beast were nothing compared to the many exposing videos that the following YouTuber made. As the self-proclaimed OG Mr. Beast hater and president of the I Hate Mr. Beast Club, YouTuber The Cavernicle has tried to cancel Mr. Beast for over four years now. But why? Well, his video titled Mr. Beast is unironically evil explained it best, as he made a giant list of all the things Jimmy should be criticized for. To start off, he addressed the video where Mr. Beast spent $1 million with the winner of the last to take hand of $1 million keeps it challenge and mentioned that it wasn't necessary to show off the poverty that the contestant was living in. But there are a lot of people who will watch Mr. Beast's video with this guy and they will live in similar, if not worse, circumstances then Mark, and here's Mr. Beast basically going around his house talking about how terrible his life is and how happy this guy won a million dollars because he's exploiting these aesthetics of poverty to make him look better. And then he discussed the video that was even worse. As I survived 50 hours in a maximum security prison was apparently extremely gross and racially insensitive. In his opinion, he shouldn't have treated a maximum security prison like a fun playground. He's doing this when millions of Americans are in this system right now. And of course you have to be so racially insensitive to not understand the implications of what you're doing and how you're making light of a situation because America historically, and it got ramped up under Joe Biden and Bill Clinton with the crime bill, has imprisoned disproportionately people of color for non-violent drug offenses, sometimes for the rest of their lives, right? Who will have to live in conditions like this for the rest of their lives. And criticized Jimmy for not raising awareness about the problems within the prison industry at all. He followed this up by recognizing that Mr. Beast does actually help people, but continued finding fault with some of the charity work Mr. Beast does on his philanthropy channel, calling it exploitative and mentioning that people in those videos mainly get on camera to get humiliated for their circumstances thanks to a power imbalance. And again, he just comes across as an absolutely massive narcissist who is really out of touch with reality. And that's what often happens when young white men become very successful YouTubers. But that wasn't all, because after laughing at the fact that Mr. Beast wants to become president with no political agenda, he eventually exposes Jimmy for being involved in a crypto pump and dumb scheme. In a video from another YouTuber called Fillion, which was titled Gary V's NFT Market Manipulation Scheme, the YouTuber claimed that Mr. Beast and Logan Paul actually admitted to market manipulation manipulation on the Impulsive Podcast. In this episode, Jimmy explained that he and Logan bought a ton of CryptoPunks, which are NFTs that sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars after getting told to do so by Gary Vee on a call with many other billionaires. CryptoPunks, it's gonna be huge, it's gonna be the next Facebook, where all of us were like, Okay, Everyone's Gary. Judging. I'm texting Logan. And <laughs> He's I'm like, like, is this, Gary is this legit? <laughs> <laughs> For all of us, we're like, yo, Gary's nuts. Yo, uh, Gary was right again. Are you guys hearing the words like coming out of this man's mouth? They're laughing about market manipulation. <laughs> This, this is this is a crime if this was stocks. And while the YouTubers seemed oblivious to the fact that they just exposed this, even co-host Mike Malek questioned it. When when Gary does that call with all these billionaires and uh, eight months or a year later, everybody's like, Gary was right again. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible that he's right because of the call? However, Logan quickly denied this by saying that there were 10,000 crypto punks anyways, and that they only owned a small part with an entire market still being around it. Fillion didn't agree with this argument. I mean, that logic is just completely skewed because you quite literally are setting the new standard for what these things are worth. And the Cavernicle ultimately used this situation to question why Mr. Beast is involved in pump and dump schemes when he states that he only wants money for charity. He he finished this exposing video by saying that Jimmy took COVID loans he didn't need, speculated a bit about his taxes, and concluded it all by saying that it's okay to be skeptical of YouTubers like this. But was there even any truth to these claims? Well, according to the comments, there was. Many could find themselves in the criticism that the Cavernicle presented, as some Mr. Beast fans even changed their mind on him, and the market manipulation claims got even more support, with many being disappointed in Mr. Beast and Coffeezilla even supporting the original 
video from Villian, Jimmy never ended up responding to these accusations. And to this day, the Cavernicle is still coming for him, as he recently uploaded another video in which he addressed the toxic Mr. Beast work culture and its lack of safety. However, this YouTuber wasn't the only creator that called out Jimmy for his toxic work environment, as a former editor of the channel, Matt Turner, also described his work with Mr. Beast as the most mentally draining time of his life. Now, Matt Turner originally started out as an editor for Mr. Beast in 2018, but then already left the channel a few months later. Why? Well, a video uploaded to his personal channel would reveal it all. In this video, he stated that working for Mr. Beast was his dream job, that going to work every day was a blast, that Jimmy paid for his rent every single month, that nobody did anything wrong, and that he still considered them as friends. However, this friendship eventually turned out to be nothing more than a lie, as only a year later, Matt tried to expose Mr. Beast on Twitter. He claimed that he was yelled at, bullied, and called replaceable every single day. And after having mental breakdowns often, being made to feel like an idiot after every editing mistake, and getting no credit for his work, he ultimately decided to leave. Funnily enough, almost nobody believed his accusations, as many defended Mr. Beast and actually came forward about their positive experiences with the YouTuber. And that wasn't all, because Mr. Beast even responded to the situation by revealing to Keemstar on a phone call that he paid Matt $10,000 as severance and even got him a job at SOAR at the time. As a result, Matt deleted all of his tweets and claimed that he got hacked, after which he ultimately made one final response on a second account saying, I'm literally an innocent dude trying to live life and wanted to have an open conversation about an experience I had about my old job. I don't deserve so much effing hate, man. The drama eventually faded, but a whole six months later, Matt still couldn't let it go. Granted, something similar happened with one girl saying the hype house treated her unfairly. And that went super well for her. Maybe if I was a super attractive girl, the outcome would have been different. Honestly, that's probably it. And after continuing his attempts to try and cancel Jimmy for a while. Because when Jake the Viking left Mr. Beast to do his own thing and pursue his own channel, guess who decided to try and make it dramatic? If you guessed Matt, you'd be right. All the video is, is him cherry picking all of the bad things that Jake talked about during his video to try and make Mr. Beast look evil. He eventually gave up and decided to finally make a pretty poor apology to him. I just wanted to say, hey, I worked for this guy and it wasn't great, but that's it. And it became video series and drama alert and John Scarce and all of these drama channels picking up this story that that never was my intention. Uh, if anyone was offended by me saying that that wasn't the best experience, well then I do apologize. Matt ultimately moved on and surprisingly featured on the season of Big Brother as a result, which was huge for the growth of his personal brand. But even this new adventure couldn't be without any drama. As a person claiming to be his sister, then exposed him on Twitter for saying the N-word often, being a bully, manipulating their mother to kick her out of the house, and giving her anxiety and panic attacks. Yikes. Nowadays, he's an artist with over 200,000 followers on Instagram, and he continues his journey in content creation with a series on Instagram and TikTok where he and his girlfriend built their dream apartment. And finally, we have someone who made cancelling creators and celebrities her life's purpose. A YouTuber with over 200,000 subscribers that has called out Darman, Coco Melon, and even Gordon. Gordon Ramsay. Of course, I'm talking about that vegan teacher. Yes, Miss Katie, also known as that vegan teacher, is an animal rights activist, internet personality, and former educator, mainly known for promoting veganism. She does this by controversially calling out massive YouTubers and internet personalities, framing them in a way that makes them seem anti-vegan, and then reaping the rewards from this with many commentary and documentary YouTubers covering these outrageous videos, including me right now. In fact, she did this for Gordon Gordon Ramsay, Coco Melon, Mark Rober, Nikocado Avocado, and eventually Mr. Beast as well. It all began in 2021 when she uploaded an exposing video titled Mr. Beast, no amount you give to charity can undo the damage you are causing by promoting eating meat, in which she criticized this video where he ate a $70,000 pizza. You see, Katie believed that these $70,000 could be used to save a lot of starving children, which was a fair point. But considering the fact that Mr. Beast already did a lot of charitable work on his 
Ministers Philanthropy channel at that point, including him literally feeding struggling families, it wasn't fair of her to completely disregard this. The comments agreed here, with many calling her out on this fact. But this was just the beginning of her mission to cancel Mr. Beast and turn him into a vegan. In that same video, she stated that Mr. Beast promotes violence. Mr. Beast, unfortunately, I have given you so many X's here for promoting the violence for not talking about the environment, for not promoting healthy eating, no vegetables, no fruits, every single thing you mentioned comes from suffering. In another video, she demanded Jimmy to mention if something is vegan or not, then faulted him for not using enough vegetables in his food videos, and ultimately labeled him as someone who thinks kidnapping is okay because he used cheese. Now, you're probably wondering how she made that connection. Well, here's the math. Cheese comes from milk, milk is stolen from mothers, and those mothers had their baby stolen, meaning that Mr. Beast basically supports kidnapping. Jimmy obviously never responded, but his fans definitely did which caused her to host a whole 30 minute livestream responding to them. I am vegan, I was born vegan, you were too. Go back to your roots. And considering the influx in views she experienced from this whole campaign, the Mr. Beast videos kept being made. She made a rap about him. Why is Mr. Beast an animal bully when instead of eating meat he can just eat protein packed veggies? Did another 20 minute livestream responding to his fans, claimed that his gaming channel pays for murder, kidnapping and torture, and even came after his feastable chocolate. What? What? Milk chocolate. Milk chocolate comes from a cycle of violence where little baby boy cows are ripped away from their mothers. And while she then focused on other things for an entire year, like how cats should be put down since they aren't vegan, she decided to return with one final cancellation attempt in December of 2023. Building 100 wells to help people in Africa. Fantastic. The only thing I would say to Mr. Beast is now what? How are you going to follow up to make sure that these people with their water are going to be able to grow crops? Make sure that you always emphasize veganism in all of your videos. Yes, it almost seemed like that vegan teacher finally gave Mr. B some recognition for what he had done. But of course, it had to be followed up with the fact that it wasn't enough. Because veganism is what's most important. To this day, Katie is one of the many that failed to cancel Mr. Beast. But it doesn't stop her from spreading her message. As she uploads multiple times a week on her YouTube channel, posts almost daily on Instagram and TikTok, and secretly profits from her controversial fame with a Patreon and cameo. I wonder if that money goes to any good causes. However, while all of these YouTubers failed to cancel Mr. Beast, there are some who successfully copied him. So click the video on the screen right now to see what happened to his most infamous copycats.